Hey, I'm Sam Prokopenko, and it's time to draw butts. I'm sorry for all the fart jokes. I can't help myself. This lesson will explain the three major butt muscles and how they're covered in fat and skin. The first step in drawing magnificent butt muscles is to understand where they attach. Let's take a look. Butt muscles originate on the pelvis, which if you remember, we constructed using a bucket tipped forward. Check out the pelvis lesson if you need a refresher. The iliac crest of the pelvis swoops from the front corner to the back triangle. This sloping side plane is where the gluteal muscles anchor, right under the top ridge. They insert into the femur, mainly around the great bony landmark, the greater trochanter. So here's what they look like, going from the origin at the pelvis to the insertion at the femur. But there's more to it than that. They also insert into a long stretch of tape-like tendon that runs down the outside of the leg, called the iliotibial band. The middle portion sits tightly along the side of the quads. Sometimes it's so tight that you'll clearly see it pinching the muscle. But we'll cover that in the quads lesson. The three butt muscles we'll study in this episode are the gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, and the tensor fascia latte. There's also the gluteus minimus and a few others, but they're hidden deep inside, so we'll ignore them. These three butt muscles can be simplified to a tire or a croissant, whichever you prefer. It's amazing how much butts and croissants have in common. Similar shape, filled with fat, they're delicious, and some other similarities. Ooh, I might have gone too far. But let's stick to fart jokes. Basically, the butt muscles wrap around the greater trochanter, which is right in the center of the hips. From the back, the forms can be constructed with two sets of diagonal ellipses. They kind of look like a butterfly. A broad layer of fat sits on top and droops down until it tucks into the gluteal fold. More about that later. On a female butt, there's a thicker layer of fat. But that butterfly doesn't fly away. In fact, it gets bigger if the top part merges with the obliques. The love handles keep this rhythm going all the way through the narrow part of the waist and connect the two sides. Use this rhythm when you're practicing your gesture quick sketch. It's very helpful. It's a slightly more detailed version of the bean. Of course, that's not always the case since butts come in all shapes and sizes. A slightly less defined design would be to add a little more fat around the sides for a, a rounder bubble butt. It really just depends on the fat distribution. You could have a softer, rounder cheek, but a defined separation at the iliac crest between the glutes and obliques. If you draw enough butts, you'll start learning the patterns. That's why in an upcoming episode, we'll learn how to draw butts from every angle. Don't miss that one. Gluteus medius. The gluteus medius is a lot like a muscle you already know, the deltoid. Both pull the limb away from the body, both have multi-directional fibers to pull the limb forward and backward. They're even similar in shape. The gluteus medius is a simple, sort of flat trapezoid on the side of the pelvis, above the greater trochanter. I say sort of flat because it's actually a bloated, thick muscle, but most of its thickness is buried in the pelvis. The ilium is a deep concavity. The gluteus medius fills a lot of it and then sometimes overfills it, so it's slightly convex. While it doesn't look like a huge bulging muscle, the gluteus medius is large and powerful enough to do its job. And if it's really developed, it does curve out a bit. And of course, on an average person, there will be some fat there, which might also curve that form. Or completely soften it into the leg. You already know that fat varies a lot on people. It originates from the front three quarters under the lip of the iliac crest, though a part of its origin is covered up by the gluteus maximus. Its fibers converge like a fan into a thin flat tendon, which inserts on the outside surface of the greater trochanter. It can be tricky to figure out which bump belongs to which of the three muscles, especially since the anterior portion of the gluteus medius 
can bulge out and separate from the posterior portion. In this pose, the leg is being abducted diagonally toward the front, activating the anterior portion. The posterior edge often blends together with the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus is the biggest muscle in the entire human body. Are you not entertained? The latissimus is wide, but it's thin. The gluteus maximus is thick. I poppy. It's the famous butt muscle that allows us to stand strong. We'll study the fat after we learn the glute. So if you're on a fat-free and gluten-free diet, you should consult your dietitian before watching the rest of this video. <laughs> Most of the gluteus maximus fibers insert on the iliotibial band like this. It extends the femur. It also laterally rotates the femur. It also abducts the femur. And its lower fibers adduct the femur. But we may be tempted to think of the gluteus maximus as anchoring at the pelvis to grip and move the leg, when it often does the opposite. Once our knees are locked, we use the pillar of the leg as the anchor, and the gluteus maximus pulls on the pelvis and holds the rest of the body up. That's why we're so special. It lets us do some amazing things. It keeps us standing and lets us sit on it. It's our uniquely human anti-gravity muscle. Now for the final layer. Did you know that we humans are the only animals uniquely and abundantly blessed with butt fat? But what about... Yeah, hard to believe, but that's all swelling. Most humans find it to be kind of gross, but trust me, the male monkeys go bananas over it. Anyway, fat makes up about half the width of our hineys. And it's not all equal. It gathers toward the center, so it's heavier medially between our legs. Also, gravity's a thing, so it's heavier at the bottom. Sometimes you might even see a transition between the muscular form and the squished fat when the model is sitting. We'll talk more about how it affects the surface in premium. This horizontal crease is called the gluteal fold. It's obvious when the weight is on one leg but it disappears when the leg flexes forward. The gluteal fold is lower than the actual gluteal muscle fibers on the inside. It extends outwards horizontally, cutting across the muscle fiber. So on the surface, on an average person, you won't actually see this diagonal swooping border of the gluteus maximus. On a typical athletic type, you'll see the gluteal fold and a subtle hint of the diagonal muscle fibers continuing to the side of the leg. On a bodybuilder with impossibly low body fat, you'll just see the shape of the muscle. That's why this looks so strange. There's no gluteal fold. Artists love the gluteal fold because it's a natural cross contour line around the form of the leg. We can use it to show whether the leg is coming towards us or going away from us. It's a rhythm line for gesture drawing. As the leg goes forward or back, the gluteus maximus and fat pad will react to that movement. Every butt is different, with varying amounts of muscle and fat. The premium version of this lesson has an extra section on physique variations for this reason. But if you want the reliable landmarks, seek the bones. That's why we studied pelvises before putting on muscles and fat. And there's one more muscle to study. The tensor fascia latte. Uh -huh. No, it's not a coffee drink. Oh. Oh. The tensor fascia latte is a muscle located around your pockets. Almost the shape of your pockets. The tensor fascia latte anchors at the asis, aims to the side of the greater trochanter, then just stops. It doesn't attach to any bone here. In fact, it attaches to the iliotibial band, which is hard to see in this area because it's very thin fascia. Remember, fascia is like saran wrap. When the tensor fascia latte flexes, it pulls or tenses the lateral fascia. That's how it got its name, tensor of the fascia latte. Not because it's a latte. Yeah. By the way, I don't wanna keep saying this long ass name, so let's use TFL, which stands for too long. Just kidding, it's tensor fascia latte. Let's move on. 
the TFL and gluteus maximus are antagonists. They both insert on the iliotibial band and pull it from opposite directions. The gluteus maximus did a number of tasks, so does the TFL. It flexes the leg forward, it abducts it out to the side, and it medially rotates the leg. The shape of the TFL is a bit tricky when the leg moves. In a straight leg, it's longer and flatter. Kind of a long teardrop shape since it's much thinner at the top. When the leg flexes, the TFL really shortens and bulges out. You might see it bent in half with a pinch in the front. Maybe even something crazy like this with a bunch of skin folds down its length. Or just shaped like a short triangle. And you might even see muscle fibers, like little fingers grabbing onto the iliotibial band. This variety makes the TFL tricky. On females, there's a thicker layer of fat softening the hips. It's reserved to feed the baby. Even on someone very skinny like Christy, there's a layer of fat hiding the muscle definition. The hips vary a lot based on the gender, age, and most of all, physique. Physique variation. Available in the premium section. And not just physique variations. Premium Proco people get assignment demonstrations, a downloadable ebook, and premium fart jokes. Even if you don't get premium, I still care about you. I hope you participate by doing the assignment and posting in the groups. And the assignment. Your assignment is to give Skelly a butt. I've included three photos of Skelly posed in the description below. Or you can use the Skelly app to make any pose you'd like. Think about where each muscle originates and inserts. You can keep the lower leg as a simple cylinder or a bloated cylinder. Think about how the forms of the butt muscles are distorted by the pose. So get off your ass and then sit back down and do the assignment.